The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the advantage of using analog trim for helicopters. I don't usually fly helicopters and I've decided to try the analog trims that I had put into my controls with this helicopter just to kind of see how it did and I got so excited about it that I thought man I gotta make a video. I guess you could call this a follow-up to a video I made last year called Issues with Trim and Flight Simulators where I described how to use potentiometers in your controllers to control your trim rather than using what I call button trim. So the helicopter I'm using is my all-time favorite, the Schweitzer 300, which is a Vietnam-era helicopter used to train Huey pilots. I once got to ride with a guy flying one of these, and we did aerobatics right over downtown Winston-Salem. It was an absolute hoot. This particular helicopter is the Schweitzer 300 CBI by Dreamfoil Creations. Now, in case you don't know, X-Plane provides the ability to set up profiles. And what profiles do for you is allow you to set up your controls based on a class of aircraft or even individual aircraft. Now, if you've never set any profiles up, there's only one, and it's called User Profile. And that profile contains all the aircraft in the game. So I only have three helicopters in my inventory, and so I've set up a profile for those three helicopters that I call Helicopter. I've enjoyed some of the stability I've gotten from my analog controls in my fixed-wing airplanes. I decided to try configuring some trims with the Schweitzer. The Schweitzer is without a doubt the squirreliest helicopter I've got, and this was definitely the best test case. Keeping track of the names of these controls is complicated because most of the names are based on fixed wing planes so it's easy to get confused. I have three trims that I'm interested in setting up. The first one is for forward and back cyclic. That's essentially trim for the up and down movement of the joystick. And of course for fixed wing planes that's typically called elevator trim. So let's look at how I set that up. So I've set the elevator trim knob that I've mounted on the back of my Pro Throttle to be the trim for forward and back cyclic. And then the knob that's mounted on the side of my Pro Throttle that I normally use for aileron trim for fixed wing airplanes, I'll set that to rotor trim, which for helicopter is tail rotor trim. See, I told you this gets complicated. And so this final control on my CH Pro throttle is the throttle itself, which I'm using for collective. Next is my Wingman Force 3D stick, which is not really a stick at all. It's just a circuit board that's inside my CH Fighter stick to give it force feedback. But that's a topic for another day. And these first two axes here are just simply my forward and back and left to right movement of my joystick. And this last axis, axis number three, which is called throttle, is a knob that I have mounted on the side of my fighter stick, which was the wingman throttle. And I apologize this is so complicated. But as long as you have three unused axes, you can set them up exactly as I'm describing. So, with all that said, this axis number three, which I've set to aileron trim, actually means cyclic left and right trim for a helicopter. See, that's not so bad, right? So let's look at one final axis, which is the helicopter throttle. This is different from the throttle in a fixed wing aircraft. This is a twisty handle on the collective lever that's used for helicopter power. What we fixed wingers would call a throttle is actually the collective in a helicopter and is usually set up on your throttle. Confusing, right? A helicopter throttle would be a separate control altogether and I have mine assigned to the wheel on the side of a stock CH fighter stick. And that's what we see here assigned to axis number three. Of course, this is not one of the trim controls, but since it's a vital part of helicopter control, I thought it was worth mentioning. Okay, well, a quick summary of what we've done. We've set up three trim axes. One for cyclic, forward and back. 
another for cyclic left and right, and finally a tail rotor trim. So that does it for the setup, and you're probably wondering if all this misery was worth the effort. So let's find out. These trims were a bit difficult to get adjusted because I have no visual reference of where my trim settings are, so I've just been leaping off the ground and frantically moving my trims until I get them close. After that it was a matter of holding the plane steady with my regular controls until I got the trims somewhat stabilized. It was a learning curve, but I finally got used to the idea. After several crashes, I now have my trims pretty close to the neutral point. Let's see how this goes. I'm just making tiny adjustments with the trims, and as I see the plane veer to the left, I give it a little right, and then up, I give it a little down, and so forth. Well, without a doubt, this is way more controllable. I've never been able to hold it this steady, and the longer I do this, the easier it's getting. Okay, a little too much movement on the trim there. So let's try this again. I was able to go into a hover there hands-free for just several seconds. Never been able to do that before. There's no doubt about it, this is a hundred times better than it's ever been before. Well, you're pretty much seeing this real time. I, I doubt I've been at this 10 minutes, and I've been able to pretty much taxi to this whole short point really stable.